1077 GNA, Albany's number one for New Country. It's Brian from The Morning Show hanging out with our friend Cody Johnson. Good to see you again, Good sir. Good to see you, sir. Welcome back to, uh, to, to New York. Thank you. Um, there, I was watching your fans. You have all kinds of, of people, old, young, whatever. There are some cowboys, like legit yeah. cowboys, <laughs> kind of like the way you are as well. They're ready to, to kind of be entertained by you tonight. Man, it's, our crowd is a really cool thing, and that's one of the things I generally love watching uh, from city to city, from market to market, is it really doesn't matter. Young, old, red, yellow, black, or white. Um, there are some real cowboys. There are people that only put on their cowboy hat to come to this show, you know exactly. what I mean? Which is, which is really cool. I mean, I'm sure a lot of cowboys have a lot of opinions about that, but my deal is if you, if you have people that are coming to your show that may not ever wear a cowboy hat and they put it on for your show, it's kind of a, it's kind of, that's a huge compliment, yeah. you know? So I enjoy watching the fans, especially, you know, when you've got a young kid on the front row of like a festival or something, uh, and then right next to him is someone in their 60s and they're having a good time. And then you come into a bar like this and it's a completely different atmosphere. So I, mean, I think it's really cool. You have uh, an incredible energy. We, we've, we've spoken before. Uh, when I last talked to you, uh, you it was, it was kind of like the, the on my way to you was really like rising. And we were talking a little bit about your career path. And I think you had mentioned something to me like you have entered this industry and done everything that you wanted to do on your own terms, right? You didn't sign with a label, you know, when, it, when until you were ready and all that stuff. Do, are you? Is that important to you to be able to control your um, your image, control your music? Is it is it important for you to take control of all of that stuff? Well, it's not so much <clears throat> the control as it is who I am. Like when you talk about an image, I don't know what you, I don't know what you mean because this is just. This is the way I dress. This is I didn't you know. This is nothing's ever changed. This is who I am. Um, I'm a cowboy, and I know that that's the way I look. Um, as far as my music goes, there's a certain standard that um, I'm not willing to cross. There's certain lines I'm not willing to cross. And what I mean by that is, in the last ten years, uh, the sound of bro country and the sound of pop country has really become prevalent. And uh, that's great for because like I always use Dan and Shay, which I'm label mates with at Warner Music Nashville now. If they tried to dress like me and do what I did, you wouldn't buy it. Vice versa, if I tried to do what they did, you wouldn't buy it either. And I know that about myself. So um, as far as the control aspect of which, you know, to, to your question, um, when you've spent 13 years building a business and, and, you know, between me and my manager, Howie, and my <clears throat> booking agent, Chad, and my band and everybody that's been on board for a long time, it's hard to, my exact words were, it's hard to give somebody a piece of a pie they didn't help you make. However, when you when you enter Warner Music Nashville, they were the only record label in town that was that was even willing to talk to me about maintaining my independence as a signed artist. And that excited you. And that, well, it's a huge thing because you know when it comes to your masters and your publishing and creative control, and having pretty much the majority shareholder in your in your business merger, if you want to think about it like that, um, nobody's telling me this is what we're putting out. Nobody's telling me, here's what you're gonna play, here's where you're gonna play, here's how you're gonna dress. It just doesn't work like that. And it sounds like you're somebody who you can appreciate some of the other artists that do what they wanna do. Absolutely. Like you brought up Dan and Shay, and obviously right. they did the record with Bieber, not something that you would really consider doing, I would imagine. Like you wouldn't do a song with Bieber. No, or would you do a song with Bieber? I mean, I'm open to all kinds of music. If you looked at my iPod, yeah. you'd be so okay. surprised. This is, thank you for saying that. What would what would surprise us about what what would be? You ever heard of uh, Los, Los Tigres del Norte? No. Live at Folsom Prison? No. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. yeah. I go from everywhere from there to, to Kid Rock to Ricky Skaggs Bluegrass Gospel albums. I mean, it's literally if music if you feel something if it makes you feel something then it's good music. I think that there's a problem with people in this industry that jump on a bandwagon too quick to where you have an impactful artist that sounds like a Dan and Shay. Well, then there's 40 more that don't make you that, they don't make you feel that like they do. Um, when Garth Brooks first came to town in Nashville, there was 10 years of people phrasing just like him. You know, and it was like, I think what my message is to be authentic, be yourself. I can't do, be, do anything but be myself. That was my main uh, conversation point with John Esposito at Warner Nashville when we sat down and talked about this deal. I said, man, I have to be myself. I can't be anything different. It's not because I'm right and you're wrong. It's just, I'm really good at doing one thing. And that's being able to tell my crowd the truth. Whenever I tell them that I only sing music that I'm passionate about, that's the truth. Um, when I say this is just a six-piece honky-tonk band, we're not running tracks and we're not doing a lot of the things that other people do, that's the truth. Um, when I tell you I team rope and ride cutting horses, that's not so the Cowboys will buy my record, it's the truth. And, and you're here, we were talking to um, some of the people with your, with your crew, and I, I kind of joked with them, I said, could he 
show me how to do a little rope. I could show you. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, absolutely, but you'd have to get here early because that's the kind of stuff that you're doing out in the parking lot before uh, Yeah, shows. obviously, whatever, it's not freezing cold outside. That's a little different. Yeah, it's not we easy carry to a rope dummy. We're usually uh, we're either working out um, or roping the dummy or doing something that's just, you know, staying active. But, um, you know, right now, a lot of my focus has been listening to music, listening to new music for this next record, which is another cool thing about being a signed record label artist with Warner Nashville. When I say maintaining your independence, this is me, myself, Trip Wilman, uh, who's produced all my records, and Scott Gunner, who's been over my publishing for my, pretty much my entire career. We're out on the road listening to songs. Uh, nobody's saying, here's what's hot, here's what's selling. It's literally, when you get through picking songs, Cody, come to us and we'll, yeah. we'll help you make this record. It's that's a, it's, I don't think that's been done before in Nashville, well, to be honest with you. I, When I hear you talk, it's hard to believe that you're a young man in your early 30s, you're 31, 32. 32 years old. You've been married for over a decade. Yeah. You've got two kids, and, and I don't want to curse during this, but you have your together. Like you got your stuff together, I appreciate it. and but it's but it's easy too to be kind of like influenced by outside sources and lose focus and stuff like that. I just I can't I don't feel like you could ever become that person. No, and I've always I've always put in interviews like this, like getting rich and getting famous never really that never really appealed to me. That was not the thought process. I want to make music that I feel like has integrity. Music that someday when I'm dead and gone, right before I take my last breath, I'm proud of. There, I don't think that there should be a single track that you ever look back and go. Man, I wish I hadn't recorded that. Or, man, I wish I hadn't made that move. You know, I, I also believe in keeping good men around you that help influence your decisions. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm just not very wavered. You know, I've kind of got my goal in mind. I know exactly what I'm after. Um, and I'm not going to stray from that. I, I owe it to the people that have given me a career. They love you, by the way. How are your girls doing? They're good. They're do growing you, up too do, fast. Do you sing to them? Do you, do you struggle? Do you just yeah, most of they sing to me. Do they? Yeah. What do they sing today? Uh, Merle Haggard, yeah. Patsy Cline, are George they Jones. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they're what? I'm sorry, four and four two. Four and two, yeah. And you, you, they're singing these artists back to you? Well, that's what I play them. That's what I play them. That's what we play on the radio. Like, we don't listen to new music. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we listen to all the... Taylor Swift and the Frozen <laughs> soundtracks and all that right. stuff. Give it a few years too. Yeah, yeah. Dominate Daddy's truck. Yeah, that's awesome. Sounds like you got your stuff together. Thanks. It's great seeing you again. You have fans that were out there in the freezing cold oh, cowboy so hats, no sleeves, mullets. <laughs> they can't. I know. Wait. My kind of people. Awesome. Thank you, Cody. We Thank you. It. Thank you very yes, much. Sir.